and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So I finally got around to watching Squid Game to see what all the hype is about, and I have to say the hype is definitely deserved. I watched the whole thing in just one day, very captivating from start to finish. And of course, since this channel is all about game development and the show is about a game, then I thought, why don't I try to make it as a video game? But I also thought that just doing the obvious and making a game where you play as the players is a bit too obvious, plenty of people have already done that. So instead, here's how I made the game where you play as the guards and your goal is to stop the players. I think that's a nice twist and the final game came out really well. In total, it took me about 20 hours to build this, so let's see how I made it and in the end, you can go play it for yourself and see if you can beat my high score. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a builder defender game using C Sharp just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so I start off like I start off all of my games, just designing on paper, start writing down some ideas of how I could make an interesting game where you play as the guards, and initially the goal was to remake all of the games, but then I thought about one of the most important things you should do as a game developer, and that is managing scope. So I decided to focus on just one game and make it as best as I can. Recently I was working on a video on how to make a rifle scope zoom effect. That reminded me of playing Desperados and Commandos as a kid, and those games had a really nice top-down rifle scope mechanic, so I immediately thought that would be perfect for the very first game, Red Light, Green Light. I started writing down ideas for how I could make that design work from the perspective of one of the guards, how it would look like, what are the mechanics, win-lose conditions, and so on. Then with the basic design defined, I got to work and start a new Unity project. Now the map is a pretty crucial part of the game, so the first thing I did is set up the layout and the scale. In the show there's about a dozen guards shooting the players, but in here there's only just one guard, so the scale and number of players need to match that. If it's too big then it becomes very frustrating and there's lots of empty space, but at the same time if it's too small then aiming becomes almost irrelevant. So I played around a bit with the map in order to get the correct scale. Then when that was settled I started gathering some visuals. Now usually when I make my own games I tend to leave the visuals to the very end. For example my last game Battle Royale Tycoon looked like this until about two months before launch. But here since I'm making this game and recording the process of making this video, it wouldn't look too boring if I just had some basic cubes until the end. So in order to make this video more interesting, I went and got some visuals right away. First thing I made was the background. Looking at the show, it's just a bunch of dried grass. Initially I thought about taking a screenshot from the show, but then I thought it would be much better if I just built that image in Unity and took a screenshot. So I just grabbed a simple grass asset that I picked up in a previous sale, set it up in a terrain with the correct colors and took a picture. Thankfully this game is pretty simple in terms of visuals. Then for the characters, I am definitely not a 3D modeler, so I just browsed my asset list looking for something similar. I found one character with some overalls, so I picked that and just recolored the texture. It's pretty simple, but I think it looks good, pretty similar to the show. So honestly, this is a great example of how you don't need to know every single skill and how you can use assets correctly. Even if you don't know 3D modeling, you can still make quite a bunch of stuff by just grabbing some pre-made assets, recalling the texture, and maybe even using ProBuilder to change a few things. Just make sure when you use the assets, make sure that they fit your game, otherwise it won't look like an asset flip. So with that done, I then got to work on the main mechanic, the zoom effect. The idea for this minigame came right away since I had just done that rifle scope tutorial. In that video I covered three methods with different pros and cons, and here I went with the third method, the one with the best visuals. It used a second camera and a rendered texture, then also just added some depth of field effect and some simple logic along with an animation for bringing up the scope. And just with that it already looked pretty good. I can bring up the scope and zoom in on any of the players. Now up until this point everything was fixed, so the next step was making a simple camera control. I used the super useful Sin Machine package, just made a dummy game object and set the camera to follow it, then just a very simple script to move and rotate the object and the camera follows along. So it's pretty much the exact same thing that I covered in the third person shooter video. It's a super simple method and works great. And at this point I could now rotate the camera, so it was time to add some visuals to the other side of the map. First up making the guards. Again, I just grabbed the exact same character model that I used for the players. I just painted the texture in pink, then I added a simple mask and a helmet. Now to make the helmet look like a hoodie, I just used ProBuilder in order to drag the edges down. 
Then three is also a pretty simple one. I've got tons of assets I've picked up from previous sales and bundles, so I just need to search for it. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. And finally for the doll, I tried searching for an actual doll in my assets, but I couldn't find anything. However, I did have some very low poly characters, which I think look pretty doll-like. So I grabbed it, recolored the textures and set up the scale. Then just made two simple animations, just rotating the head. So that's pretty much it for all of the visuals. Then for adding some basic logic, adding shooting to the players. For identifying the shots, it's actually pretty easy, just doing a raycast, exactly like I showed in the mouse position video. I just made a layer mask to only hit the players and that's it. I could then click anywhere on the map and identify if there's a player underneath. For the damage, once again, I reused my super useful health system, which I made on the very first video on this channel three years ago. So just a few seconds and I had health implemented. Then the question is what happens when a player dies? And the obvious answer is adding some really nice ragdolls. Maybe you don't know about it, but Unity actually has a really helpful ragdoll wizard. I wonder how many people don't know about that. I might do a quick video on it. It's really super simple to use. You just open up the ragdoll wizard window, then you just drag and drop all the various body parts. Make sure you select them correctly and then just click a button. Unity automatically adds all the rigid bodies and colliders along with the joints. So it's super simple and with default it already works pretty well. And just with that I had some really nice ragdolls falling down. Then just need to apply that to shooting the players. So when the player dies it just instantiates the ragdoll object on the exact same position. Just do that and yep when the player dies it instantly gets replaced by the ragdoll and falls down. Then of course falling down directly isn't much fun so I just added some simple explosion force to really push it around. So with that the ragdolls were looking great. For another tiny effect I just added some simple particles when shooting the floor and some blood particles when shooting the players. All of them may be using the standard Unity particle system. For another small effect I also added some screen shake. Since I used Sin Machine this one was very easy to add. Just need to add the impulse listener on the virtual camera, then add a impulse source component and manually generate the impulse when shooting. That's pretty much it. Then for the highlight, which is a pretty important thing, pretty crucial to this game. Initially I was going to make it myself. I've already done an outline shader quite a long time ago, but that one is in 2D, whereas here I'm working with 3D meshes, so I needed to find another method. I started making it myself, but then I remembered that a while ago, I'm pretty sure I picked up a highlight asset in a previous asset store bundle. So I just searched my assets and sure enough, it was there. Just imported into my project and it worked perfectly. So this is yet another example of how assets can really help you work better and faster. You can always build it from scratch, but sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Thanks to this asset, I had my highlight effect fully working in just a few minutes. Next up, it was finally time to work on the AI. The players need to run forward on the green light. Then on red light, some need to be safe and some need to be caught. I made a bunch of different behaviors. So some of them, they stop right on time and they are safe. Some of the players run back instantly on red light and try to escape, kind of like what happened on the show on the first round. Then some other players would stop just a bit too late and they were caught but didn't run away. However, if they stay there forever, it would be a bit too easy, so I made them run away after some time. So all that logic was pretty simple to add, just a basic state machine, one on the main manager script to handle the red light green light states, and another one on the player script to handle running forward, stopped or running back. And for moving the players I also kept it extremely simple. It really just moves the player forward and for rotating I use the quaternion lerp to rotate the players towards the target position. And of course combine all of that with the previous highlights and gather some stats to see which players the guard caught, how many were red and how many were green. All in all just some very simple logic. With those stats I then made a very simple UI, just a little bar on top counting the number of players, number of shots fired and accuracy. As usual, I made heavy use of C-sharp events in order to keep the code nice and clean and keep the UI completely decoupled from the logic scripts. Up next, I added some more logic to the player's behavior. I added a health system onto the door. Once again, I reused that same health system that I made on the very first video on this channel three years ago. Made a simple health bar using a world space canvas. And I also searched my assets to find a nice animation for attacking the door. I found I had an asset pack with some crafting animations and one of them was hammering a wall so that one was perfect. So with that the players attack the wall and deal damage. Then with some basic logic testing if the door was destroyed and if so let the players escape. This is a great mechanic because it means that you as the guard don't have infinite time to slowly aim and shoot. If you're not fast enough the players will destroy doors and simply escape. 
At that point, the min logic was mostly done, just added the logic for winning, so if the players reach the end, they survive. Then I made a simple game over screen, just showing the stats to see how many players survived, how many escaped, how many were caught, and the guard's accuracy. And for fun, I made a simple score calculation. After watching this video, you can go play the game to see if you can beat my high score. Lastly, I just need some sound effects. The main thing is the song, so I just grabbed that straight from the show, played around with the pitch in order to make it faster or slower, and just a general shooting sound, again, just search my asset list for something I bought previously. And with all that, pretty much everything was done. I made a WebGL build so you can easily play it in your browser, and here's the final result. Alright, so that's how I turned Squid Game into an actual game, but you play as the guard. This was a really fun minigame to make, there's already tons of games where you play as the player, so I think this twist makes it pretty unique. I used lots of systems to make this game, lots of things that I covered in previous videos. All of those are linked in the description, so if there's something you want to learn some more about, then go watch those videos. Now you can go ahead, go play it in your browser or download the PC version, it runs a bit better. So go ahead, and see if you can beat my high score, let me know in the comments how high you can go. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.